and maybe offering it to 24 students. I'd really like you to talk to us a little bit more about the product um, and what it takes to put that together. Um, and I will be honest, we have a very robust, in my opinion, Lego Robotics team yeah. here. Um, we do a lot of 3D printing in our middle school. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to see what this would look like for our uh, when you say the product, you mean the 3D printer that we're going to build? Yes. Okay, so let me send you, send you first of all the link to that so you can take a look at the thing. Um, and I've seen the videos and the website. Yep. Yeah, Let's, if you could send that again, that would be great. Okay, so here's, uh, here's the actual product description in detail, like all the features and stuff. The idea there is that it's, uh, it's a very basic printer. It's a three-axis printer which uses what we call the universal axis. It's, it's structured more as a construction set because the same kind of printer that we use there, the same axes, could be re reconfigured or put on different frames to make it a uh, different geometry, like for example with five axes, or a much larger size. So we can build that thing up to like a two by two foot uh, print bed. Uh, so we go at it from the concept of um, so let me show you this picture of the, what the universal axis looks like. But the idea, it's a, it's a construction set approach, um, which is great. It's education, but we're not stopping at education. The scalability of it allows you to make this into real industrial grade machines. So take a look at the universal CNC axis. And that's what we use. So that's the building block. You see that thing with the, the green background that is the high precision computer controlled axis that gets you like 10 micron resolution and that's what's used in a d3d universal the d3d universal has an extruder that we developed it's a very robust extruder that runs both one the, the smaller and larger filament sizes and we can interchange heads to do things like plotting which is done in the workshop is in the steam camp as well now and then going on to replacing other heads um, I'll actually send you a link where you, we actually have some of the other heads captured in a more recent video I'll send you this link which is a teacher recruitment video for the steam camps but you can put on any kind of a, a head onto the device so in the workshop we're actually going to do the the plotter attachment where we plot either drawings or circuits that we can then etch, or you can put on a, a CNC drill head, basically a drill that can function to do things like CNC hole drilling or light duty milling using the same platform. Now, that's, that's the part on the universal axis, the D3D universal. Beyond that, it's the Raspberry Pi tablet that we're, we'll be building and then the experiment with the welder so there's circuit making, there's coding and electronics like with a Raspberry Pi tablet. The idea is that we build the, the device, the printer part on the first day and with that we actually create, build up everything from there. So for example we can print the battery packs, we actually print out the pen plotter attachment and we print out the holder, yeah we print out the holder for the, the CNC mill using a small, basically one of the small 555 motors so it's it's designed as an experience where you bootstrap to to anything else now that that same little printer you see there can be used mm -hmm. to make more printers or the larger size printers or the CNC torch table let me let me show you for example the CNC torch table um, as a larger example okay so for example you can make this printer this one the D3D Pro printing parts with it or you can do the CNC torch table um, yeah, like for example, these parts, um, this is an older torch table that we did, but that gives you an example of where you're actually printing larger parts and larger rod sizes. So we start with the eight millimeter rods for the just basically a small 3D printer size rods for the 3D printer and then you can move up to one inch shafts 
for the universal axis, which means a much more heavy duty machine. And we're actually doing up to two inch and three inch, which means heavy duty machining for doing things like making engines. So that's the kind of stuff we're starting up on. So this is pretty, um, pretty interesting. I mean, we're known for the construction set approach. That's what we do. That's what makes it modular and buildable like Legos. So this is this Shredding, strapping up, and taking the printer as you're creating it to, and then utilizing it right away to oh, yeah. create new parts or other pieces, and oh, yeah. I think that's awesome. Um, what, what then do you need the sites that you do this program to have? Because I'm seeing a lot of other equipment, and while we have a maker space and everything else. I'm just wondering, you know, what type of access or expectation, like what would be the required equipment um, to get a lot of this done? Yeah, no, there, that's minimal. You, we need a four by four foot working area per team of two students, and we need a cordless drill. Otherwise, like the larger machines I'm showing you, that's not in a program. That's like the stuff you can make with it. But at the basic thing, it's a desktop thing. It's a thing you do on a on a on the table yeah does that answer your question yes it does so the the question is how many drills is it per team or per student well you don't need a drill the drill makes it faster you we have a five millimeter hex key that you can assemble the entire there, there's like five little uh, tools that we need uh, so that's included in the kit we provide all of that so now the cordless drill if you have that that means you probably save like a half an hour to build the thing that's you know drill is useful in general so half hour manual labor yeah <laughs> uh versus manual so it's not necessary i mean it's perfectly fine when we i i say drill because you know i, th I think a lot about production and that half hour matters in production right so right. um um, share with me. So I know we're looking at four schools doing this at the same time. Yeah. Uh, what will what What do you see us doing together during yeah. this nine day period? Well, so so the way it works, we we have the design. So we the first day we build initially, and then we just kind of ha share the video to and an introduction and everything. So there, it's pretty much self contained. The part where where you get to the collaboration is in the design days. So in the five days, so if it's four days, it's kind of like the boot camp part. And in it still, there's design exercises where we go between the 3D printing, design in FreeCAD, and iterative prototyping where you go up, upload and download stuff from our wiki repositories. Uh, so there's innovation there. To give you an example, last time, last Steam Camp in January, uh, we had a design of the plotter attachment. Now, one person during the workshop itself designed it so it would actually add to the print head so you didn't have to replace the tool head in order to use it as a 3D printer or a plotter. That happened right there. The person uploaded it and the guys in Europe printed it out and started using it. So that's, wow. that's how the collaboration happens. If you have okay. more, more effort then you can, in principle, get very complex tasks done in a short time, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. That with this massive global collaboration, you can you can now have a competitive development method that brings in collaborative development as the norm, as opposed to the proprietary development that happens where everyone pretty much reinvents the wheel. So that's a big deal for us. That can happen a little bit in the first four days, but in the last five days, it's all about that. We're meeting, you know, we, we go in on a meeting in the morning and afternoon check-in, and then we upload, download designs, discuss how we, we've done the design of the Raspberry Pi tablet and make it better. So, for example... So we just need... Yeah. Sorry, we just need to make sure that we have, you know, screens and the internet access to be able to connect with all the other schools and talk to them. You just need bandwidth and a, and a screen, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the main thing. What we're going to do is we're just going to leave the... Uh, if we can get maybe if you guys can allocate one person to be like the collaboration uh, manager collaboration architect the guy who uh, networks with the other team that would be a good role we talk about collaboration architecture 
and we can dedicate we would like to if we have enough people at each of the events dedicate one person to pretty much sit on a computer or you know, you can switch that role but a person that does the interaction and networking with the other teams to say hey what did you guys learn uh, what can we use and stuff like that so it's really about developing the collaborative skills that's awesome with 24 students how many adults do you feel are needed uh, I can or one of our instructors can do the limit is 24 but, but we could use like if we have a couple of I mean we can run with one person we can do that the it depends on a skill set or of the students but I would suggest like one assistant or two assistants um, so ideally what what would happen here is we com communicate so say you've got your your steam teachers at your school we'd collaborate and uh, we'd prepare them a little bit to to get up to speed a little and then when the event comes they're they're more able to facilitate the collaboration because it's really about um, yeah it's really like not this hierarchical thing it's like we're all in it to co-create like the instructors and students are doing it so whoops sorry something cut I just got bumped off Arsene where are you? I'm in sweet Maysville Missouri it's next to Kansas City Ah. Kansas City area. <laughs> yeah. We were assuming you were like in some tropical warm place. No. Oh, that that was last week. We did a CEB microhouse build in Belize just last week. So we ran a team of 24 people uh, and we built a house in five days. That's collaboration. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the kind of stuff we're we're trying to do. The inspiration here is imagine getting a, a whole bunch of schools together. Uh, we can design remotely uh, as a team, but then we can descend onto a location and build something crazy over a weekend or a few days. Um, so basically, take first robotics, but but kind of shifting that to technology with a purpose or like community service projects. Uh, really focusing on a collaborative thing. Um, as a way to have real impact. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's sounds, the, yeah, yeah. That, that's what you're talking about building trying, some stuff. We're trying to build a garage for a car. This could really work out for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This I think this is um, I've talked to our head of school. We're on board. Um, I can email you about. I mean, we because this is going to be on our campus and the. The contract and all that, we, we need to make that our own, but I yeah. assume you have language you put in those. I'm not sure. Um, but we, I guess we can go back and forth through email and all that technical yeah, stuff, if you, but we are definitely on board. Why don't we combine the contracts there so you can send what you need on your side, which will probably cover some of the things we do, and then we can um, just, I'll just add any of the terms that we need to cover. So, uh, so let's talk about the audience so are you so this is June 22nd for nine days and there's a weekend there now how does the weekend sound to you like is it okay to do that couple of days off or is that work bad or is that good or bad because I was kind of surprised that's what Bob Ogle I don't know if you guys know Bob Ogle the guy from the I spoke. yeah I spoke with Bob. right mm -hmm. so he suggested doing the weekend off so people have a weekend is that work for you or how does that work yeah I think it's completely I mean I think families here that do summer camp Okay. Get the weekends off. Go to a camp. Yeah, I think that'll be. Fun. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we are gonna. Um, we will only be sending this out to our internal community. Um, okay. We are a school um, here. Though we ended summer camp, so we we can't really advertise outside of our community. Okay. But our school is a. Is, some people will say a science and math school, so this will be a big hit. Um, that's cool students, so. um so you can get 20 24 students registered for this i think so <laughs> okay that's really good and bob talked yeah. to you about the price structure is that the same arrangement you'd like to have yes okay um, that sounds good so yeah it sounds like a plan oh that's um, great so you know i mean that's anything are there any examples that you have of, of uh information schools have sent out to their communities to get students to join them? We have the, so the, the link I sent you, plus the, let me show you the one that's coming up. Um, 
there's the promo video at the beginning of the well actually uh, there's a new one that we just got up the generic one I'll send you another video but the video there's one video for recruiting instructors and just one one promo video the promo video shows a pretty decent picture of what it's about so that's probably a good thing and then you can look at the current announcement for any language you want to take perfect okay all right excellent all right sounds great well thank you so much for your time yeah thank you thank you so the next step is then look at the contract and see how we uh, maybe you can put me in touch with um some of the facilitators so what are you looking at for the teachers that would come to this you have a couple in mind or it, would that um, be like part of their professional development or <laughs> um i have sent it out to a couple of my tech uh yeah 3d printing people and they're they they're they've already had that plan for a year mm -hmm. um so i can't this would, professional development would be a next year thing but okay these two teachers that are interested yeah as far as a video documenter can you can you attract a, somebody can you do video on this so we, you can promote this for your future yeah, we programs have a, we have a we have a communications team that will be able to do that oh awesome yeah. great excellent well, well, that's that's good for now. So next step would be looking at the contract, and I'm excited about this. This is great. So we're gonna have a few of the schools working together. Yeah. Okay. Excited. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I will follow up by email. Thank you. Uh, do All you right. mind? I recorded this. Do you mind if I share that with my team, so they can that's take a fine. look at it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank take you. care. Bye bye. Oh.